Can I build a fireworks slash laser show in Tears of the Kingdom in less than two days? I really wanted to do something cool to end of the year and as thanks to all you guys who've watched, subscribed or interacted with me in any kind of way. So I've had this idea like 10 days ago and you know what happened? Procrastination happened. Zero. None. Nada. Niente. So instead of taking my time, now I only have time to record the footage, edit the footage, make a voiceover for it, probably make the fireworks looking a bit better via set editing in two days and not get stunlocked by all of it to not completely miss the current underlying worldwide theme of, you know, entering a new year, but I digress. So I'm not really going to talk much about any of the glitches here, but you can check out the description I will link resources to any of the shown glitches there. We're playing on 1.0.0, other versions where all of these glitches work on our 1.1.0 up to 1.1.2. And please forgive me if this video seems rushed. Well, that's because it is. So let's get started. We start off on day one with making our incredibly well-designed and thought-out plan. Yeah, I know, it's a beauty, isn't it? The goal is to essentially have a mid-air suspended beam emitter combo that will show the letters T and Y, symbolizing a thank you to everyone being a part of making this a wonderful year. We will glue the beam emitter builds to some mid-air suspended cannons because that will give us some nice stationary explosions. We also might build some stationary fire wheels or something like that. And besides that, we also want some nice rockets as well to make it a bit more dynamic. And that's it, a beautiful blueprint. We start off by sealot recall locking cannons into the sky. And then building our beam emitter, thank you by using quantum linking. Nango has a pretty good guide about both of these glitches that I linked in the description. But that looks already pretty good, I would say. After finishing up our beam emitter combos and getting sidetracked a bit about quantum linked stuff going a bit freestyle, we make our first test. And after having a small mental detour, why do I keep getting sidetracked, about explaining steak nudging. Oh yeah, nudging is, uh, nudging is basically you have like, you put pressure on the and stuff something like and then the switch is like reloaded, then the pressure is like, so on, you should like, Hey, surprise, and now you have a bit more distance between two objects. We actually continue. And, damn it, I realized that the T looks like absolute shit. I have an idea. So I recall lock a third cannon into the sky to stop the beam from going too far. All right, that doesn't look too bad. We then go over to building some rockets and trying out different materials. I initially tried to not glue material to the rocket because the game has a 21 glue limit, I believe, and anything above that will delete the oldest glue connection that exists. Additionally to that, there's also a 21 item limit that will delete the first dropped item as soon as you exceed 21 items in the overworld. So, if we build too many fireworks, this could compromise the glue connections of the beam emitter cannon battery combo in the sky. What a word. However, my test trying to interlock now fuse entangled materials between a bomb and a cooking pot were not so fruitful. So I ditched the idea and just tried a minimalistic approach. After some interesting tests using various materials, me getting whoops sidetracked once again and cosplaying as a jet engine, I decide for a 5 dazzle fruit plus sonai rocket and bomb combo for now. We shoot some more rockets and then we check our plan. 
We're not fully there yet, but this looks pretty good so far. We start off day 2 with a quick showcase, because yesterday I was talking about an alternative way to get the thank you letters into the sky, using the iron rods laying around in mainly near Death Mountain, and electrocute them via fuse entangling a shock emitter and activating gas. I went and got some iron rods and tried to do that, which it doesn't look good. It it really I'm I'm not a fan. But turns out that this kind of sucks. The way I mounted the cannons, this is far too much out there to see accordingly. Plus. We need way too much materials, this would decrease the maximum of rockets we can shoot during the light show and if we are not careful, which we definitely are not, this will also put the structural integrity of our build at risk as you can see here. After that we continue experimenting with rockets. I had the idea to take a cage and attach it to the rocket bomb combo, then fill that up with now fuse entangled explodable objects. This would have the added benefit of not counting toward the 21 object world limit as well as the glue limit. Only issue is, it looks like shit. I mean, look at it, it's just uh, not pretty. So we get back to our original rocket design and eventually, thanks to Lytus' idea, he sent me via Discord, we came up with a pretty good balance of pretty and lean design, coming in at one rocket, one sonai bomb, one hylian pine cone, one desert fruit, one bomb flower, one muddle bud, and one puff shroom, and it looks like this. After getting sidetracked and finding a T-posing NPC that I'm pretty sure has already been discovered, there he is. I caught him. I caught the boy lacking. I get the beautiful idea to set up a hoverstone and now fuse entangle a bunch of star fragments to create kind of a shooting star effect. The idea is to put the hoverstone and star fragments up into the sky above the beam emitters, and then despawn the hoverstone holding the fragments, which should lead them to fall down in front of the beam emitters. Cool idea, right? Well. Please don't tell me. It didn't work and we don't got time to lose so we're just gonna move on. Now, all we need is a good way to launch all rockets after each other and still fix our view, just in time before they explode. And for that, I tried to set up arrow smuggling, using shock fruits with questionable results. I'm dumb. <laughs> Whoops! Oh wow, it works now. Ain't that crazy? Well, turns out that you can't really shock yourself when you forgot to remove the lightning helm from Link which protects Link from receiving shock damage that is needed for the glitch setup. After setting up Arrow Smuggle and with that gaining the ability to enter bullet time practically everywhere, we can shoot our first fireworks with mixed results. Okay, one. But goddamn, that is already pretty pretty. I spent some more time getting better launches as well as some better camera work and we get this final shot without the laser show. Perfect. Next up, we want to film our mid phase, which is the laser show in some combination with Pyroworks. So we set up our laser show and batteries once again and glue everything to our tightly held cannons in the sky. We get back into position and after the first launch I realized that the laser show is not as visible as I had hoped it to be and I don't really get why. However, mashing ZL fixes that for some reason. So I set everything up and get back into position and we get this beautiful shot. So let's try it a bit differently now. So one and a two 
and a few more tries including setting up the laser show again and then I realized that my firework laser show combo still feels a bit bland. So I remember my great design plan and start envisioning some flames turning in the sky. Now the biggest question that I have is can we make it turn and get to building a hover stone, a wheel, two flame emitters, a frost emitter and a fan later and I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Wow, that's pretty. After escorting the two flame wheels into the sky and having my personal gripes with the recall ability. Okay, somebody gotta explain this to me. Why does my recall not work? Probably because there are currently three cannons suspended midair by said recall ability, so I probably can't complain about it. I get some good footage. As a celebratory last firework, we attach a star fragment, launch it, and I call it the day. Because now comes the fun part. Over the course of the last two days, I gathered all kinds of footage for my final firework slash laser show combo. Now I need to skim the footage I recorded for the good fireworks, line them all up so it looks like a consecutive clip and let some editorial magic work its way to not make this look like absolute shit. And it looks like this. The year 2023 truly has been a fantastic year. Thanks to family and friends, but of course also because I started this wonderful journey of making content. I honestly started this channel just because I love explaining things and I genuinely enjoy breaking Tears of the Kingdom so far and having a blast while doing so. And you guys watching and supporting me with subscribing or liking, commenting and giving me new ideas just adds so much to the experience. I mean, you guys watched my content for over 3000 watch hours. That is incredible to me. In 2024, I have a lot of different types of content planned besides guides and tutorials. And we'll just see where this takes us. Let me know if you enjoyed this type of content and if you want to see more of stuff like this. Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell, it helps me out a ton. And if you're interested in live content, I generally try to stream from Monday till Friday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central European time, which translates to 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Twitch as well as YouTube. And I'd be happy to see you there. Oh, and it's safe to say that I will have to get back to this firework and beam emitter challenge. I already have a lot of ideas to improve my fireworks. Thanks for watching. See ya.